welcome folks to another session of mathematics with la geometry man now i want to do for you functions and on functions i'm focusing on grade 11 functions i am going to start with the first function which is a quadratic function. Now, what am I going to do first here? I want to show you all the characteristics of this function so that when you sketch, you know what to expect, you know what to look for, you know what to find, and you know why. First of all, let me say this very important thing to you. Any function is defined by its own specific equation. No equation, no one equation will ever define two different functions. One equation is defining one function. Now, in this case, I'm going to take a quadratic function, which is defined by f of x, which is used to denote y, which is ax squared plus bx plus ac. Now, this is a quadratic expression which defines only the quadratic function which we refer to as a parabola. Let's write the parabola. Now, when you sketch this function, you should know the following characteristics. Number one, very important, the parameter A. Parameter A, when A is positive, you must know that your function is concave up. Concave up, meaning that it has got a minimum value of y. Let's write the concave r. I normally don't use words like smiling and say. I use mathematical words. It is concave r, meaning that the parameter a is positive. When parameter a is negative, your parabola would be concave down. Now, concave down, it means that it is now giving us the maximum value of what? Remember, I said concave up is the minimum. It is giving us the minimum value of one because the smallest value of y is up and the biggest value of y will be right up there. Now, you go to this one which is quite down. The biggest value of y is there. All the others will be smaller than that one. Very important. Now, you now know the shape. I call this a shape which is influenced by that. And don't forget that when we were in grade 10, we said when parameter A is becoming smaller and smaller, the arms of the parabola diverge away from the y-axis. When parameter A becomes bigger and bigger, the arms of the parabola converge towards the y-axis. Now, point number two. You now know the shape of the graph. Point number two. You need to know the intercept. The first intercept that you need to know is 
the eggs in pasta. Folks, be very careful. The eggs in pasta is or are the points on the X axis. X in pasta points on the X axis. Now, what does that mean? It means that if they are points on the X axis, the value of Y will always be equal to zero. Remember that now. Or the equation that defines the X axis is Y is equal to zero. That tells us that on the X axis, the value of Y will always be zero. Number two, you must know the y intercepts. Y intercept, what is that? The y intercept is that point that lies on the y axis. And remember, the equation for the y axis is x is equal to zero. It means that on that line, Everywhere the value of x is zero. Now, one, two, three things are very important. Next, what do we need to know now? We need to know where the graph is turning. Talking about the turning point of the graph. Now, for turning point, what I always preach to my learners is find first the axis of symmetry, which is not to be minus b divided by 2a. Determine that first in case your graph is given in that form. The axis of symmetry, which is minus b over 2a. Now, this would be the value of x. It is now the value of x of y. It is the value of x of your turning point. Then thereafter, you determine the value of y of this point by replacing x everywhere by what? Replacing x everywhere in that equation by minus b divided by 2a. Now which equation is that? It will be your given equation. From this, we can therefore conclude that the turning point is axis of symmetry is to the value of y that we obtain when we substitute the axis of symmetry into the given equation. Now, by that, you shall be having your coordinates of the turning points. Now, moving on, what else do I need to know in this particular graph? You need to know the domain of this graph. Now, what is the domain? The domain are all x values that you can substitute there to obtain the values of y. And in this case now, when you substitute there, you won't have any mathematical problems, provided your x is an element of real numbers. Now, one other thing that we need to know is the range of the graph. Remember, what is the domain? All x values of the function which is given. What is the range? All the y values of the function which is given. Now, in this case, be careful. 
when your aim is positive, meaning that your craft is concave out, your range would be y is greater or equal to the value of y of the turning point. Please be careful about that one. I repeat again, when A is positive, when A is positive, we get minimum turning point. That, that minimum point now would be used to determine all the other values of y of the function. That would be y is greater or equal to the value of y of your turning point there. Now, when a is smaller than zero, that is where you get maximum point. In that case, all the values of y would be less or equal to the value of y of the turning point. Now, folks, knowing this is so, so powerful. I can tell you now, we can give you any parabola, any question, as long as you know the following. I'm telling you, you will never go wrong. Now, from that, which are the characteristics of a parabola, comes the mechanical interpretation of the graph. You must know when the graph is decreasing. Decreasing meaning that moving from highest point to lowest point. You must also know when your graph is increasing, moving from lowest point to highest point. Now, another thing, be able to tell us where the graph will be positive and where the graph will be negative. That is also very, very important. Now, let's take this information and sketch a, a parabolic graph. Let me give you f of x which is equal to x squared minus x minus six. Now, my question or my instruction would be sketch f, sketch this graph. Show me all intersects with the exits and the turning point. Now, with this information, that must be very easy for you. If you don't, in the exam, we are going to break it down. We would never let you swallow the whole elephant. We chop it into smaller pieces that you can swallow. Now, in this case, I've got f of x, which is equal to x squared minus x minus c. I always encourage people to start with the y intercept. Determine the y intercept first, provided if you are instructed otherwise. Why y intercept? Remember, it is very easy to determine. Y intercept, x is equal to zero. It is the information that you know. Now, I go then, remember, f represents y. That means my equation now is x squared minus x minus 6, which is equal to 0. Now I factor this. Factor that. The factors of x squared are x and x. The factors of 6 that together with that will give me that. 
are three and two. And the bigger number must be negative. That one must be positive. Now, x is equal to three or x is equal to minus two. That means my x intercepts are three is to zero. What do we do now here? The x intercept. So x intercept y is equal to zero. I'm sorry about that. Then minus two is to zero. Those are my x intercepts. Even though I wanted to start with y. You see uh, the adrenaline rush and that beauty of mathematics is kicking over. Now let's determine the y intercept. The value of x is equal to zero. Now it means we go to where we see x, we put zero. That will be f of zero, which is equal to zero squared minus zero minus six, which is equal to minus six. We replace x by zero. Now, the point is zero is to minus six. What have we done up to that point? We have determined this and that. And in this equation, which is that, all intercepts with the axis, we have done that now. Next thing, you must know the turning point. The turning point, as I said, I am going to say axis of symmetry. X is equal to minus B divided by 2AB. My B is the number in front of X. There's the B in front of X. It will be minus this one into minus 1 divided by 2 times A. What is A? The number in front of x squared, numerical coefficient of x squared, which is 1. I multiply this by that, I get 1. 2 times 1, I get that. Now, that means my x value of the turning point is a half. Now, I need to get the y value of the turning point. I must go to f and replace x by its value, which is the axis of symmetry, in this case, which is half. Now that would be f of half, which is equal to half all square minus into half minus 6. Now, I simplify this. This becomes 1 divided by 4 minus 1 divided by 2 minus 6, which is, I'll write all the base in terms of 4, 1 divided by 4, I must multiply by 2, divide by 2, which will give me 2 divided by 4, and this one I must multiply by 4 divided by 4, which will give us 24 divided by 4, because I'm not getting a calculator now. Then all the denominators are the same. Minus 24 minus 2 is minus 26. Minus 26 plus a 1 is minus 25 divided by a 4, which is minus 12.5 divided by a 2. Now, I now know my turning point. My turning point is a half is to minus 12.5 divided by 2. Okay? Now,
From this, I can be able to sketch my graph. Sketching my graph now. Let's do that. Beautifully short together. Let's sketch this graph. Remember, I am sketching, not plotting. We are sketching, not plotting. Keep that in mind, which is very, very important. Because throughout in your exam, you will be sketching, not plotting. Now, Let's start with the x intercepts. The first point is 3 and 0. I will put that point there. 3, which is 3, is to 0. Then the next point is minus 2 and 0, which is this side. Minus 2 and 0. Then we have 0 is to minus 6 now. Let's extend that line. 0 is to minus 6. Therefore, we plot that point. Minus 6, let's put it somewhere there. Now, from there, we've got the axis of symmetry. My axis of symmetry now is the line that divides this graph into two equal parts. My axis of symmetry is half. In this case, I'll put it somewhere here. I normally use the dotted line for axis of symmetry, and I write the equation of the axis of symmetry. Then, now, when x is half, the value of y is minus 12,5 divided by 2, which is slightly there. That is half is to minus 24 divided by 4. You can do that with your calculator, it is fine. Now, the next important thing is what is the shape of my plan? I can see that A is positive. There, A is positive. My graph must be concave up. Now, with a three hand not a ruler, I draw my graph there. There we go. Please, don't draw a parabola with the ruler. Once you do that, I have seen many people taking a ruler and doing that. Now, that is not only a parabola, it is an absolute value graph. Please, refrain from that. Now, I now label my graph. This is the graph of F. And the axis must also be labeled. It is Y and X axis. We have sketched the parabola using this information and the given equation. Folks, I am going to stop right there for you to be able to have a practice on this. And now, please subscribe, like, share the page with the others, and leave a positive comment. If you have any question, leave your question in the comment section. I will address you. Good luck with your functions. All the best with your mathematics. Thank you very much.